Happy Sabbath. We want to thank our God for blessing us throughout this Sabbath. And we want to welcome you to our afternoon session, to our Bible study. And before we begin, let's humble ourselves as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and love. We thank you for the opportunity to worship and praise your name. Even as we enter to our study, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to minister to us and also to our listeners. For we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today, our study, we are going to study about science and the Bible. In, in that we have been looking about the study of creation, and we have seen that God indeed created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, God rested, and thereby creating the seventh day. So the world exists in an ecosystem whereby there's a time frame of seven days, there's a cycle of seven days in a week, and this, though humanity has tried to change, it has never changed, but it still continues even till the present time. And we have been having various challenges because you find that science has come out to dispute the Bible. And especially when it comes to the theory of evolution, you find that a lot regarding the Bible is being discredited and thereby setting aside God having been the creator of the universe, the creator of the world. It's very interesting. When you go to the book of Job chapter 38, there's some very interesting question that the Lord is asking his servant Job to answer. The book of Job 38, verse 1 to 3, and the Bible reads, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Verse 4, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines its measurement? Surely you know. Or who scratched the linen upon it? And I'd like to jump to verse 31, and it reads, Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades or lose the belt of Orion? These are the some of the various questions that if we, if we try to see, sometimes science may not be in a position to answer. Or as it tries to answer these questions, you find that using scientific prepositions, it may not accur accurately answer them because you find that depending with their scientific presupposition, you find it, it's still against what's there, what's found in nature. And this clearly shows that God is the creator of the universe and the earth and all that is there in the world. When you look at the various scientific presupposition, it tries to disqualify the word of God by using some, pre some extra biblical material, biblical in extra biblical information to dispute the word of God. But ultimately find that whatever science is trying to put forward to bring across against the word of God, it still doesn't find basis because it's disapproved by itself, by what is happening or what's there being created in nature. And that's why the Bible clearly says that the world and all that is in it clearly testify that God created it. It speaks about God. It brings knowledge of that God is the creator. When you read the book of Psalms, when you read the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 1 to 3, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and their firmament shows his handiwork. Verse 2, Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. The line has gone out through all the earth and the words to the end of the world. 
in them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. What clearly the Bible says, what is found in nature, what is found in what God created, clearly testify that indeed there is a God who created the earth and the entire world. Sometimes you find that science has tried to disregard God through its discoveries, but you find ultimately what is found in nature will clearly testify that indeed there is God. Today I'm going to use some of the, some three aspects where you find that the, the scientific studies has tried to disprove the existence of God or has tried to, dis to, dis to disprove that the world was created by God. When you try to look at the first, the first instance is in geology. Geology is the study of rocks whereby people study rocks and try to find information from the rocks and from it they can be able to discover how old was the rocks or information which are laid underneath in the rock. And in geology, various scientists have come up with various theory whereby they say that um, this world having stayed in millions and millions of years through through the process of soil erosion and various weather, weather climatical condition, you find that the soils has been eroded from one place to another. And so thereby they came up with a strata. Strata is the various levels which are found in the rocks and in the, in the soils. So you find that with these various levels that they have come up with, they try to measure how old are these various levels from the, the lowest to the one which is at the surface of the earth. So from this, with scientific studies, they have come up that these rocks have been there for millions and millions of years. But when you try to study with recent even scientific study, when they try to look at these various layers, they have found that there is no uniformity in these rocks from all over the earth, there's, some, there's a missing link, there's no uniformity. Because if whatever science is trying to say in these various levels of the rocks, that ultimately what is found in these rocks, that there is no unif uniformity from one place to another, or in an, one continent in another. In these levels, they are found to be some dis some disunity in that there is no uniformity and thereby ultimately even the scientific studies have tried have concluded that whatever they have found out from the rocks in the various layers and that they have studied they have concluded that there has been a catastrophe though the the scientists say that this catastrophe was not a one-time catastrophe. It has been over a period of time. Various places in the world has experienced ca catastrophes. And because of these catastrophes, that's why you find that there is no uniformity in the various forms of the layers of the rocks. And this clearly shows that the world was destroyed with the floods. And when you, when you look at the floods, you see that everything was destroyed upon the surface of the earth because water from below and water from above came. You find that water from the ground exploded from the ground and filled the entire earth and water from above. And you see that this brought uh, a discomfort in the world and everything was spoiled what was on the surface of the earth. And thereby you see that the things which were on the surface were buried by the elements which came up from the ground. And that's why you see that when you see during creation, these, these uh, precious stones and elements, most of them were on the surface of the earth. But when the flood came, you find that these elements were buried and they were taken away from the surface of the earth when they were buried during the flood. And this clearly shows that the world experienced one universal catastrophe that destroyed the earth and all that was on the surface of the earth was buried during that time of when we had a universal catastrophe and that was the flood. 
And ultimately, even when you try to look at, this, uh, at the rocks, you'll find that if, this, if, if these layers form themselves over a period of millions of years, then it will not be able to explain the reason why you find that from the rocks, some animals, some species have been found having the shape of its original form. And that clearly shows that the world was destroyed by the flood. Otherwise, these species, these fragments of these species which were found in the rocks could not be, the form and the shape could not be existing in the form and the shape of the original species. Otherwise, it should have been skeletons or some uh, minute elements of the actual animal which was found in the rocks. And so when you try to look at the geology and what scientists have tried to come up to disprove the creation, actually ultimately find that it does not stand because what we find from the rocks clearly define and clearly show that the world was destroyed by catastrophe which took place during the floods. And that clearly shows that God created the world and all that is in, in nature clearly testify about the goodness and the love of God and God being the one in charge of the world and we did not come from matter which does not exist. When you try to look at the theory of evolution, it says that the, we came to existence from minute specimens. We came to existence from small organisms. And it clearly says that uh, the world came to existence by one of the theories is the Big Bang, in that there was a tiny matter which exploded. And when it exploded, it released a lot of energy into the surface of the space or the universe. And in that surface, when, it, when those matter which were thrown into far distant space, they condensed and cooled and then solidified and then it became the earth. And then from there, we find that those sm small particles, as they, as they continue growing, you find it continues growing from small organism and then it became to larger organism and ultimately to man. But when you try to look in the study of genetics, it clearly shows that man is a complex being. And it clearly shows that man did not come from a small organism. And one of the person who had the... Uh, who was the pioneer or who, who, who was very strong proponent of evolution is Charles Darwin and from what he had written from his various studies. But you find ultimately whatever he had propagated was about the study of genetics. But though during his time that study was not complex, it was very, it was at the, it's, its uh, origin, original, it was people are beginning to study about genetics. He could not be able to come up with complex theory, but you find that with the study of genetics, it clearly shows that we as man have not come from a smaller or a, a tiny element to a complex element. Because when you, when you try to look at the various organisms that have been created, especially when you, when, when you study about DNA, you see that with the DNA, that there's complexity in the DNA that it, it cannot be found in the minute and small organisms which are found in the DNA of a, of, 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 of a person. And that clearly shows that man as a person is complex and he cannot come from a minute element. And even when you study when you study genetics, whereby you find that uh, we transfer our genes from one, from one person to another, and thereby saying that uh, there was a transfer of genes from that minute organism to a complex person, you find that because of the mutation, that's why you find that there was a propagation from one element to another. But when you, when you study about mutation, you clearly see that the genes that, that are being mutated, they are not, 
they, 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 they don't bring a good quality in a person or in an organism, but it brings the worst, the, the, the worst in an organism or a person, and ultimately, a person, is, a person dies or that organism dies because of the gene mutation. So gene mutation does not bring about growth or moving from one species to another, but it brings about when a gene mutates, that organism dies because of the mutation of the gene, but it does not grow or develop or mutate to something else. And this clearly disproves what science says that when you mutate, when the gene mutates, it, it, it grows from one level and it becomes another element. But in actual, in actual sense, when there's a, a gene mutation, there's, that organism tends to lose its qualities and ultimately die. And this clearly shows that as we have been living as humanity, we are not growing, but we are decreasing. As the Bible clearly tells us that the first man who was Adam was good, he was created, to, he was great. But you find that because of sin, that man has deteriorated over time. And as we continue, we are all continuing deteriorating because of sin. But when you look at science, it clearly tells you that man, we are continuing progressing. We were from, we were a cake, we were, we were in a, in a manner that sometimes we can say old school, that we were very, very ancient. And during those times, man has grown to this present time whereby he has increased not only knowledge, but also in terms of physique, in that he has become better. But you try to see in actual sense, we are deteriorating with time. And you see, the Bible clearly tells us that Adam, was, who came from God, was perfect and complete. But because of sin, we are even much more farther from the first man who was Adam, who was created. We, and as the years are of humanity is decreasing, so, so is also our physique continue decreasing. And this clearly shows that science is on the wrong when it says that man evolved, because we are not evolving to become better, but we are, getting, we are, we are decreasing ourselves, becoming worse. And ultimately, if God does not take charge of this world, we'll ultimately destroy ourselves. And another assumption, which, another aspect which science uses is radiometric study, where I find that this is where you find it, it encompasses the commonly study that we know as carbon-14, whereby the elements in bones, elements in rocks are measured by radioactive. And then from there, they are measured to see how old are these elements which are found there. So with this assumption, it has some, with this study of radiometric dating, it has some limitation. And the limitation that it has, it's the assumptions that it contains. It's full of assumption. And it's because of this assumption that you find it cannot be used to, to, to verify that man has, or you, you, the world has been in existence in millions and millions of years, even after creation, because of the assumption that it has. In the first assumption, it says that the rate of decay and half-life have remained the same and constant over time. And in this, when they measure the various isotopes of the elements, these are the elements which are found in either the bones or in the rocks or whatever they are studying. When they measure the isotopes, there's that assumptions which they have, and in that, the rate of that decay, let's say, for example, over one million, a certain amount of element in, in the bones or in the rocks will decay. And so that, that rate of decay, they have put it to be constant. And, the, and the, 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 that rate, it's half life. Let's say, for example, if a bone was found and with the element, let's say, carbon, and it stays, for example, let's say, like um, 100 years, the rate of that decay will be half in that after you measure it after 100 years, the amount of carbon that you'll find in that bone, you'll find that it's half the amount that was there at the beginning. 
And so with that rate which they are put as constant, it cannot be true because sometimes you find that there are other variables which you find. This is an assumption which has been taken with this regard of other variables which could be there, maybe of weather, various weather conditions. So you find that if you take it as a constant rate, then that means you have not considered other variables which may have come in to bring, to make the elements decay faster or decrease the decay of the elements in the rock. And the second assumption is the clock was set to zero, the material was formed. In that, when that material was, when the time that element was formed, the clock, that's the zero time for that clock. So it's like, let's say, for example, when something has been, has been made, that's the time that thing begins to work, or the year of that, the time to count the year of that object begins. But in actual sense, you cannot be there. We were not there when these rocks were formed, when these maybe bonds or were existed. So you can't assume a certain time to be the zero time with the, in essence we were not there or a person was not there to begin measuring the zero time of the element or of an object which is being measured and the third assumption is we are dealing with a closed system when we do when study radiometric the another assumption is that they are dealing with a closed system this way by let's say for example they are measuring a rock and so the assumption that they are, they are using is that that rock which they are measuring, they assume that no element has come out of that rock. No element has been removed from that rock. Let's say, for example, if you try to measure lead in, in a rock, ultimately you'll find that the, the lead which is there is not the actual lead which was there at, at the beginning because there has been that been dissolving because lead dissolves in water and other elements which, which may dissolve the, the, the lead in the rock. So you find that ultimately this, this amount of element that you find in that rock may not be the exact amount which you find in a rock. So you find that whatever you'll be measuring will be limited, will not be more because some some rocks which these elements are found there they are, they are porous rocks so you find that with time they are dissolved and they disintegrate and you find that the actual amount of element that you measure in that rock will not be enough to continue with the measurement so you find that these assumptions that have been used they can they cannot stand to the test on its own ground and that clearly shows that with what science has tried to bring about to disprove the existence of God or to disprove creation on its ground cannot be able to withstand the test of time. And this clearly shows that God, who in his own love and goodness and wisdom has created humanity. And it's very much important, um, we as people of God in the times that you are living, where you find that these theories of these scientific theories of evolution and others which try to disprove the word of God, we should be careful as God's people because ultimately they turn out to be baseless because they, they are geared to, to make us not to trust in God, to remove our loyalty in God. And God cannot be tested scientifically. God has to be tested by faith and not scientifically. We cannot put God in a glass to be able to find out God. You have to experience God in your life. If you can't experience God in your life, then there's no way you can be able to see or find God if you can't experience him in your life. But ultimately, you find that all this that science is trying to bring about to disprove the word of God is the work of the devil trying to make people not to trust in God or to remove the idea of God in their minds. And that will bring, will take away the issue of judgment and thereby giving you freedom to do whatever you want, whatever you please in your heart. 
and which ultimately turns out to be against the will of God. Then, what shall we do as God's people with regard to science? We are not called upon to disregard science or to throw away science, but as God's people, we are to use science to glorify God. We are to allow science to help us to understand God's nature or God's creative power and mighty. And when you use science in this perspective, then we'll be able to appreciate the work of God in our lives. We'll be able to appreciate what God has done in creation. And this will strengthen our faith. This will strengthen our trust in God. And this will help us to continue working in accordance to the will of God. And so, my dear friends, the time that you're living are hard times and challenging times because the world does not want to accept the idea of God. We want to ob object to the idea of God in our lives. And by objecting to the idea of God in our lives, we think that we have freedom to enjoy this life and this world that we are living. But in actual sense, even with what we are seeing in our world today, it clearly shows that the world without God cannot stand on its own. The world without God will be a destroyed world. And the world without God will be a world whereby we ourselves destroy. But whatever is happening in the world clearly shows that God is in control. And though sometimes we may remove the idea of God in our lives, God is still in control and God will continue to take care of the world despite us accepting him or rejecting him. He'll still continue to be in control. So you have a choice to make because God has given us the freedom to choose whether to accept creation, that the world was created in six days and the seventh day God rested, or to accept the theory of evolution, whereby he said that God, where he said that there is no God in this world. The choice is yours, whether to accept God or to deny God. You have a choice to make. And that choice which you have to make, it's God given. God has given each and every one of us a freedom to decide for ourselves because ultimately we'll have to live with the consequences of our choice. So may God bless you, may God take care of you, and may God help you to make a wise choice and a right decision depending with this matter. Now and forevermore, in the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you for the privilege to share of your truths. We want to commit our listeners unto your care. We thank you for the freedom and the power of choice that you have granted to each and every one of us. And help us, dear Lord, to choose you. Help us to accept you. Above all, Lord, we commit our listener who, who are confused, who don't know what to accept or what to reject, help them that despite the various bombardment that's coming from the scientific world supporting evolution, the Lord, you may help each and every one of us to accept you as our Lord and Savior. Be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.